Hello, my fellow nerds, and happy January 30th. So I know I was supposed to post by noon on January 29th because that's the Monday. Now it's Tuesday, it's afternoon. Um, I My WSET 3 exam is in under a month and I don't know, I've been taking mock exams and I'm not feeling great. I'm not gonna postpone it. I refuse to postpone it. I am going to take it and if I pass, you know what? That's great. I originally wanted like merit or distinction. I just want to pass, you know, we're taking it. Um, but I do want to have one last uh, dry January episode. And I wanted to kind of talk about the wine industry. So my partner just sent me an article. I think it was from Fortune and it was wine industry grapples with being something only boomers like as younger consumers have mind share of wine, half that of their elders. And you can find a lot of articles like this. So the New York Times has the wine business sees a problem, millennials aren't buying. Beverage dynamics, why aren't younger consumers drinking wine? The Washington Post, millennials spend less on wine but the industry keeps marketing to aging boomers. New York Times, the American wine industry has an old people problem. Yikes. Uh, Forbes, how the wine industry aims to make wine lovers out of millennials. Um, but I found the, so I'm an elder millennial at uh, 39 years old, and obviously I love wine, but I think there's a difference in like why people my age love wine and why people used to love wine. And it has a lot to do with what I want to do with this channel. And that is wine used to be a status symbol, right? And I think even now, I, I had a boss once who was like, well, I like to serve this at my dinner parties because this is a $150 bottle of wine. Um, I like to serve the wine at my dinner parties that people are going to like. And honestly, the more of it, the more adventures we get to go on, which I will get to in just a moment. Uh, but it also talks about, let's see if I can find, this sentence bothers me a lot because of their lexical choice. Gen Z's resistance to alcohol in general is a well-known problem within the beverages industry. Now, I, I get it. For the beverages industry, I'm sure it is a problem. I don't think we should call a resistance to alcohol a problem. Like, I think there, we need to address, I mean, people do drink for the slight relaxation. I even posted about it on Instagram. I had like a nightmare dental experience. And when I got home, I was like, mm, I can't even have a drink. Questionable, but uh, maybe don't refer me. I did fine, I meditated instead. But like, if they're not doing that, I feel we should celebrate that. Great, maybe it's because they go to therapy. Like, have we thought about that? Anyway, I digress. Um, it does uh, It does somewhere in here, it addresses the, um, oh, why can't I find it? Well, it says something about how, um, you know, they have access, there's a lot of access to marijuana now in all of the states in which it's legal. Um, people are experimenting with non-alcoholic products when they hang out with their friends. There's a lot of reasons that the wine industry is uh, struggling one of the major ones is pricing people out. So the article talks about, um, as recently as 2012, the price of a tasting in Napa was 2022. A standard tasting at a Napa winery now goes for $81. So in 12 years, we have raised the price of a tasting almost $60. I could get two pretty nice bottles of wine for $60, and for $81, the cost of the tasting, I could get four pretty solid bottles of wine. Like you can get a decent bottle for 20 bucks. That is not out of the question. So I think one, they need to address the fact that they're, they're pricing out the younger generations. Like we just can't, I can't afford it. I don't know how Gen Z would afford it. Um, but I don't wanna get, I don't wanna get like too, too political on this, but I think the pricing will need to be addressed. But now let's talk about why people drink, right? So. If you're drinking expensive wine to show off to your friends, that's not important anymore. People don't want to do that anymore. I drink um, largely because I think wine is so fascinating. Like, first of all, how many varietals are there in the world? Honestly, I should probably know that. No idea. Um, hundreds, though. Like, there are so many. Like. Italy has all of these vineyards that never make it over here because the vineyard is just someone's backyard. 
900,000 vintners in Italy. That's, that's one, <laughs> this is my Italy, that's one country worldwide. We're talking so many grapes, so many wines, and they all taste different. Like, it's so insane. I know it's science, I know, but we're taking a grape, we're taking the juice out of it. We do a lot of stuff to it that we kind of covered in the other videos, but basically we ferment it with some other extra, you know, options. And then we get all of these adventures, and that's what I mentioned earlier. So, to me, wine is almost like this, I'm gonna wax poetic here. <clears throat> I was a nerd, right? So I, as a 16 year old, never went on summer vacation to the Cape and strolled along a rocky beach and had a summer fling with kisses on a grassy, sandy beach while the salt spray hit us. But I have drunk a Sancerre, which is basically the same thing. Um, I've never had like a romanticized, starving artist having a picnic on a rooftop with the smell of the city traffic eating, you know, chocolate covered strawberries and a teeny tiny bottle of truffle salt that you got from the local bodega because they were getting rid of it or something. But I have had red wines that basically were the same thing. So I think what we're missing here with all of these things is the stories and the fantasies and the romanticism that can happen with wine. So I guess where I'm going with this <laughs> is um, whatever your reasons for drinking wine, I'm very excited that you're here. I'm super excited that in two days we'll be back to the wine and I will definitely be posting about the first wine that we have. I haven't decided what it'll be yet. Um, and let's go on some adventures together. And I hope that if nothing else, by following this channel, you are able to start to truly romanticize and find the indulgence in wine and that you do not feel like it's being you know gate kept or anything like that and that you just I hope that you just get to enjoy wine as much as I do and you get to find the stories and like experiment with the tastes and go on these little mental adventures I think I just said the same thing like 30 times um, I'm gonna drink this coffee and go study some more Cheers, and until next week when we'll be drinking wine again, um, I'll see you then.